Welcome to episode four of Listening to Your Bearings. And in this episode, we're gonna consider the controversial ceramic bearing. Now, ceramic bearings have been used extensively in some industries for quite some time now. For instance, the aeronautical and the medical industry because the ceramic bearings qualities, it's high tolerances and it's high spin capabilities. Three other qualities of ceramic bearings are they pose less friction, they last longer, and they're lighter. And all those qualities make them desirable to use on our bike. Before you go rushing out to buy your ceramic bearings and replacing all your steel bearings in your bicycle, the ceramic bearings have certain requirements. And if you don't fulfill those requirements, you're not gonna reap the benefits of having ceramic bearings on your bicycle. So what are the requirements of a ceramic bearing to make it specifically advantageous to use on a bicycle? In this video, we're gonna consider each individual part of a bearing and have a look at the pros and cons. First of all, we're gonna look at the most important thing. As we found out in episode three, what causes the most friction? The lubrication. So here's our bearing and it spins really well. And there's plenty of videos out there showing people with a bearing and showing how long it spins. That's because it's just a bearing and it's spinning with no lubricant. But as soon as you add a load to a bearing, then you start getting damage because the parts inside, like the balls, will start digging into the races, metal on metal. So you need a lubricant inside to stop that damage happening as soon as you add a load to a bearing, as soon as you want it to support something. So what do you do? You add a lubricant. So you add the lubricant inside the bearing, and what do you know? It doesn't spin as good, but it bears the load with minimal amount of damage. So what is the lubricant actually doing? It's covering all the parts inside your bearing, all the moving parts, so that when they come in contact, there's a lubricant in between and it helps it glide along with minimal damage. So you need some sort of lubricant. So we add grease to our bearing for lubrication and it goes smoothly around, but it doesn't spin anymore. That's because the thick grease has now added a significant amount of friction. So we want to go lighter in the lube. So instead of using a grease, we might opt perhaps for an oil. Now, how light can you go with the oils? So first of all, you might have something like this. <laughs> it's a rather thick lubricant. Now that will be better than the grease, but not as good as this lubricant. So how light can you go with your lubricant? Here's a bearing in this fidget spinner and there's only one drop of very fine oil in there. Spins really well, but there's virtually no load happening on that bearing. What about a bicycle? For instance, in our wheel bearings. Yep, our wheel bearings have to support us, the bike rider's weight, plus the bike, plus all the impact from the surfaces that we're riding on. That's a fair amount of load to carry. So for instance, if this is our wheel bearing and we put a very fine and very small amount of lubricant in there, our bearing will spin, but with all the load on it, our bearings will be pushing out the lubricant at the contact points and in effect will be running dry. And that's gonna cause damage very, very quickly. So the lubricant we use enables our bearing to cope with the load as well as protect it from contaminants and moisture coming in from the outside. Now, not all the bearings on our bikes do exactly the same thing. For instance, in our wheels, they'll spin significantly faster than, say, in our bottom bracket and in our pedals. They cope with a fair bit of load, but they go slower. And they are different than if we have bearings in our rear derailleur. Now, they don't cope with much load, a bit of spring tension and a bit of vibration, but they spin a lot faster than any other bearing on our bicycle. So, if we're thinking about minor gains and we want the maximum amount from our bearings then considering how we use our lubricant for each individual bearing on our bike is important so it's not only the viscosity of the lubricant you use in your bearings it's also the amount of lubricant you use in your races it's called the fill rate for instance imagine this is one of your ball bearings in your races and that's a race if you don't use enough lubricant, it may be so that at the contact point, it can be squeezed out and running dry. So effectively, you'll be damaging the race 
as well as the ball bearings. So that's premature wear. Now if you use too much lubricant, first of all is you're adding a lot of friction. The bearing's not going to spin very well. Also, you can pop the seals out, that's going to cause damage. And also, instead of the bearing rolling along nicely, it starts to skid. So it rolls a little bit, but it's mostly going to skid along. And that's also going to cause score marks and premature wear on your races and your bearings. How you lubricate your bearings will also be determined by the sort of riding that you do. For instance, if you're doing mountain biking, then you're going to get a lot of shock type loading, as well as a lot of contaminants coming in at your bearings as well. So you may opt for a slightly more viscous uh, lubricant and with a slightly higher fill rate as well. If you're doing track racing, for instance, indoor velodrome in a very clean environment, then you can get away with a less fill rate and a lot less viscous lubricant. And somewhere in between there will be your road bike. So you've decided you want ceramic bearings in your bottom bracket. Which bottom bracket will you choose? And then, which lubricant will provide the lowest friction in any one of these bottom bracket units? Thanks to Jason Smith, such research yielded these results. And this represents a 79 kilogram load at 95 RPM and at a 250 watt power transfer. Some interesting things to note. Firstly, that the fastest lubricant was the grease, but notice that the fill rate was only 25%. For grease in bearings, the normal fill rate is recommended 50 to 75%. And further down the list, molybdenum disulfide powder, which is a dry lubricant, didn't perform as good as some greases and oils. And going back to the top performer, to maintain that lowest friction, Ceramic Speed recommend that you clean and relube the bottom bracket every 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers. Now the ball bearings themselves are usually made from either silicon nitride, that's a dark colour, zircon dioxide, that's a white colour and they look like pearls, or they could be made from silicon carbide. The first quality we'll look at in the ball bearing is hardness. Hardness is called the Rockwell C rating. And a steel ball bearing has a Rockwell C rating of 55 to 60. A ceramic ball bearing has a hardness of 75. So what that really means is a ceramic ball bearing is two to three times harder than a steel ball bearing. Another quality is called modulus of elasticity. It's very similar to hardness. It basically means that the ball bearing will be stiffer under load. So imagine here's our load here and we have a steel ball bearing. This is a steel one. It's actually a tennis ball. So if we push in, it goes out of round. It doesn't take much and it goes out of round. It's not perfectly round and it doesn't go as well. If I ease off the pressure, it rolls really nicely. As soon as I put a bit of pressure on, it goes out of, out of round. But if I ease off the pressure again, it goes back. It bounces back into the shape, into a nice round shape. Now, with the ceramic bearing, I have to put my glasses on for this one. <laughs> Here we've got a ping pong bowl. Now you want to you know about ping pong bowls. They're very hard. So here's our ceramic bearing. So that's our ceramic bearing and it rolls very nicely and it takes quite a bit of pressure. It doesn't lose shape. As soon as I put some pressure on, it's still quite round. It just goes really well. But if I put too much pressure on, <laughs> it's gone out of round and now it's going to stay out of round. It definitely doesn't roll. Big dent in it. So if that's our ceramic bearing, it takes a lot of load and stays round, but too much load and it just collapses. So that's what a ceramic bearing is like. It'll take a lot of load and stays round under load, but too much pressure and it collapses. So the ceramic ball bearing is very suitable for predetermined load applications. They'll roll really well. But in shock load applications, steel ball bearings are still extensively used. Another quality of ceramic bearings is they're very round. So here I'm making a ball out of plasticine with my hands. And when I've finished, I think it's nice and round to show you. So look, it's really, really, really round. But on close inspection, it's definitely way off being perfectly round. Now, here we've got a factory made brand new ping pong bowl. And if I show you, compare which one's going to be rounder, 
my handmade one or this one made in the factory. Well, obviously, the ping pong ball is a lot more perfectly round than this one. And that's the same with the ceramic bearings. They're a lot more perfectly round than a steel ball bearing. The next quality is called uniformity of size. Here's our steel ball bearing race again. And each individual ball bearing in here is very close to being the same size, but they're not exactly the same diameter. In a ceramic ball bearing race, each individual ball bearing is almost exactly, perfectly the same diameter as each other. So what does that mean? In the steel race, with the largest ball bearing, it's going to be touching both the races and it's going to be taking most of the load. Whereas a slightly smaller ball bearing will be just going around for the ride. It won't be taking much of the load. So there's actually an uneven spreading of the load in the bearing race itself. Now the next quality is smoothness. Here's our tennis ball and our ping pong ball. This one feels rough, this one feels smooth. If you look really closely, this one's obviously like furry on the outside and this one's very, very smooth on the outside. So if you were to put these in bearing races, this one wouldn't roll as good as this one. So the ceramic bearing, if this is ceramic because they're smoother, would be less friction. Now this is called a friction coefficient. Now steel ball bearings have a friction coefficient of 0.8. The ceramic ball bearings have a friction coefficient of 0.2. The next quality is corrosion. It's very simple. Unlike the steel ball bearing, the ceramic ball bearing does not oxidize and is very resistant to chemicals. The next quality is weight. A ceramic ball bearing is 40 to 60% lighter than a steel ball bearing. Now the races themselves can be made of steel, stainless steel, chrome moly, titanium and other materials as well. And of course, ceramic. Now, the surfaces where the ball bearings run on the inside of this large one, on the outside here of the smaller one on the inside, are highly polished, so they're nice and smooth, and then they're, they're hardened, so they last a long time. So for our bicycle, we need our bearing races to be as corrosion resistant as possible. And that's where ceramic wins out over steel. It's highly corrosion resistant. Now we're talking about the full ceramic bearing, where the races and the balls are made of ceramic. There is a problem though with ceramic races. It's called micro cracking. And that's where the surfaces where the ball bearings run on suffer from very small cracks. Now this is where the quality comes in. With a quality race, it's less likely to happen than with a cheaper race. So for the cheaper races, you'd be better off using low load applications like your fidget spinners and your yo-yos. But on your bicycle, where there's decent loads happening, then you will need to use a quality ceramic bearing. The purpose of seals is fairly straightforward. There's one on each side of a bearing and they fit fairly close on the outside of that bearing. Now when in place, they keep the lubricant inside the bearing and also protect from contaminants and moisture trying to get in from the outside environment. There are different kinds of seals, but the one we're most concerned about in the bicycle industry is a non-contact seal. So that means when the seal is in place in the bearing and your bearing goes around, say the outside race goes around like that and the inside is stationary, the seal will go around as well and it will slip past the inside, come very close to the inside race, but slip past. Sometimes it's the other way around, but usually that's the case. So that means if the outside is fixed and the inside rotates, the seal is going to be stationary with the outside race while the inside one goes around. Now you have lubricant in your bearing and when you put your seal on, some of that lubricant is going to rub off on the inside of your seal. So that means as your bearing rotates, there's going to be some lubricant on your bearing going past the lubricant on the seal and it's going to cause a grabbing effect. Now that grabbing effect is friction. And that friction is going to increase with both the fill rate and the viscosity of the lubricant that you use. One way to avoid that friction of the lubricant of the seal is to remove the seals on both sides completely. But of course then you've exposed your bearing to all sorts of contaminants coming in from the outside. What you could do is just have the seal on the outside so it protects it from the outside and the rest of the bearing of course is protected, it's encased so you don't need a seal on the inside. So you might get away without having seals on the inside with your wheels because the hubs are completely encased. No contaminants from the outside are going to get in. So you just have seals on the outside. 
But what about the bottom bracket? <laughs> Here you'll need seals on the outside to protect it on both sides. The inside is encased in the bottom bracket shell, but not completely because you have tubes. You have your seat tube and your diagonal tube coming down. And what happens is quite often you'll get especially moisture coming down through your seat pole area, coming down, and of course that's why they have a breather hole or a moisture ventilation hole down the bottom of your bottom bracket to let that moisture out. Now if you don't have any seals on the inside, then that moisture can get into your bearings. Now what about pedals? You should be safe with pedals, just have the seal on the inside and the outside, but of course it's encased in the body so you can take the seals from the inside of the bearings on the pedals. With your jockey wheels, it's exposed on both sides, so not a good idea at all to take the seals off the jockey wheels on your bearings. Now with ceramic bearings, they require very clean operating conditions. So if any contaminants get in there and they're hard enough, between the ball and the race, as they go around, if that contaminant gets in there, it's going to start punching and gouging into the weaker of the surfaces, the race. And that's going to cause very rapid deterioration of your bearing. The retainer, separator or cage of a bearing race keeps the ball bearings at a certain distance apart. It also helps keep lubricant around each individual ball bearing. The retainer effectively floats between the outer and the inner race and it goes around at the same speed as your ball bearings going around in the race. Now in the bicycle industry they're usually made from polyamide and polyamide is great because it's self lubricating, it has low effects in low lubricant situations, it has low friction coefficient and it's great in handling a vibration. Tolerances. Now there's two sorts of tolerances. The fitting tolerance and the bearing tolerance. Now first of all, the fitting tolerance is divided into two sections. Your frame, how round and how perfectly measurement to the exact size is your bottom bracket shell, so the cups and or the bearings will fit in. And also the shaft, how perfect not only just round, but how perfectly sized is the shaft. Now remember, when you push a bearing in, it's going to be pushed in with a slightly tight fit. It's going to put some pressure on the outer race and make it ever so slightly smaller. And when you put your axle in through the center, it's going to put a very slight force on the inner race pushing in as well. So your tolerance on your bearings, which should be very slightly loose, are going to be ever so slightly less loose. They're going to be a little bit tighter. So, again, quality is important, how accurate the fit is and how accurate the axle is as well in measurement. With bearing tolerances, they go from C5, which is quite a loose bearing, to C0, very close tolerance bearing. In the bicycle industry, generally accepted C3 is a good all-round purpose tolerance for a bearing. Now, with good quality bearings, they're bound to have the tolerances required. But when you buy a cheaper bearing, it's not necessarily that the manufacturer is going to stick to the tolerances required in the bicycle industry. Now that's very important, especially when you're thinking, of course, with good quality bearing. You want ceramic bearings, you don't want the tolerances to be out. And the reason is because you're going to get slightly move, slight movement, slight uneven distribution of the load, and that's going to cause premature wear of your bearing. So again, quality of the bearing is important with tolerances. Now I want to just briefly touch on this subject because it's a bit of a misconception. It's called self-healing bearings. Or, when your ceramic bearing gets dirt inside, that really hard ceramic ball crushes up the dirt and it makes it into a nice grinding paste and polishes the race, makes it nice and smooth again and keeps it running nice and smooth. Now, the reason it's a misconception is, first of all, the dirt being crushed up by the bearing, which is fair enough because the ceramic bearing is very hard, but the race is not as hard as the ceramic bearing. Remember, we're talking about hybrid ceramic bearings, not full ceramic. So, now with that race, when they say it's polishing the race, what is polishing? It's actually abrasing the surface to make it smooth. It's taking some of the material away. So, when you have a bearing, you're taking some of the material away, or polishing, the inner part of the outer race and the outer part of the inner race, if that makes sense. So where the bearings run, they're polishing or abrasing. Now what's that going to do over time? Instead of having a nice tight bearing, you're taking the material away, it's going to change the tolerance of your bearing. So again, it's starting to get loose. Now one thing is loose is that, 
but it just sort of shows the demonstration there of how you can change the tolerance of your bearing and if you do that then you're going to change its efficiency and its load bearing capacity and ultimately its integrity. So how are you going with all the statistics? Feeling a bit full in the head now? <laughs> well now the fun begins. All the manufacturers of those ceramic bearings will tell you to get maximum efficiency from your bearings you're going to have to maintain them on a regular basis. So what does that mean? It entails taking off the seal of your bearing cleaning it out completely, absolutely perfectly, making sure it's dry before you put in re-lube. So re-lube the bearing with the right lubricant and the right fill rate for the application. So it's different with your bottom bracket as to your jockey wheels as to your hubs. So you've got to get all that right. And not only that, it's on a regular basis every so many thousand kilometres. So you can't just go out, buy ceramic bearings, whack them in your bike, and that's it forever and a day. You can have excellent performance from then on. It doesn't work that way. It'll only last so many thousand kilometres, depending on your conditions, of course, that you ride in, and then you need to maintain them. So if you're prepared to do all that, then you're going to save the following power. And it's already been worked out by Jason Smith at Friction Facts again. For your jockey wheels, you're going to save a half to two watts. For your hubs, a half to one watt. For your bottom bracket, 0.03 to half a watt. So at the most, when you're, all your ceramic bearings are working to absolute efficiency, the most you're going to save is between 3 and 3.5 three and watts. So if you're still all good with that, the current pricing of ceramic bearings on the market at the moment is going to cost you about $250 per watt saving. <laughs> now this is where you get your pen and paper out and the fun starts. There are a lot easier ways to save a lot more power a lot cheaper. Hang on to your hats, here we go. Buying an aerodynamic helmet will cost you only about $10 per watt saving. For instance, you might do a 40k time trial with a fully aerodynamic closed helmet in 50 minutes and 10 seconds. An aero helmet with netting over the top will be 3 seconds slower. An aero helmet with open vents will be 13 seconds slower. And a standard non-aero helmet will cost you 1 minute and 29 seconds. The tilt of your helmet alters the airflow over your back. Whether it's an aero helmet or not, how you tilt your head will help reduce air turbulence off of the helmet and over your back, significantly reducing drag. Buying a nice set of aero wheels certainly is an expensive investment, but at $150 per watt, it's still better bang for your buck than investing in your ceramic bearings. Your body accounts for three to four times the wind resistance than the bicycle itself. To get the most aerodynamic position for your physique may require some measurements and alterations. If you're unsure how to do this yourself, consult experience. Even if it costs you, it will be money well spent. Then you'll go from fast to faster to your fastest. Once you've got your super aero position, practice it and it will become second nature to you. And before long, you'll be saving more watts than you can poke a stick at. Nice aero bars. But it won't save you as much power as this. Bringing your arms in considerably reduces your frontal area. Even with drop bars, just a centimetre or two narrower will help you cut through the air just that little bit quicker, saving you power. Tyres. What sort of tyres do you use and how do you use them? Tyre pressure and the rider's weight will have a lot to do with how a tyre performs. How a tyre is made, the ply layup, how many threads per inch and whether it's belted for puncture resistance. Even the tread pattern can change how a tyre performs. And some of the best all-round tyres are not necessarily the fastest tyre. And what's the point of having the most aerodynamic bicycle without having decent aerodynamic clothing? Tops that flap or even catch the wind like a boat sail is far from the ideal aerodynamics. Jerseys that are a loose fit on you will flap around the shoulders and the back at least. Bike clothes don't need to be stranglingly tight, but a good fit for your shape. And then when you find a great fit, even the material that it's made from can save you power. So if you're serious about saving power with your clothing, a skin suit is a great way to start. And while we're on the subject of clothing, you can even improve the aerodynamics of your shoes. Shoe covers with a slippery outside material will give you even more marginal gains over the conventional shoes alone. 
Fueling and maintaining the human machine, what to eat and when to eat, can mean a difference between not just seconds, but minutes. So it's without compromise that serious athletes pay much attention to their nutritional needs. Not much point in saving seconds with ceramic bearings if your diet is lacking. So if you want results, get serious with your nutrition. And that might mean making and carrying your own food in training sessions. It's your bedtime. No! Sleep, it costs you nothing, but will enhance your performances to no end. It's well known that growth hormone is released in the first zone of deep sleep. So for maximum recovery and preparation, get enough sleep. Tactics in a bunch are played by all, but there are many ways to save minute amount of energy and they all add up. For instance, in a pace line, when it's your turn at the front, try to spend two, three, four, or even five seconds less than the average of everybody else. The biggest rider in a bunch will give the greatest draft. So guess who's saving the most energy in this bunch? Get a good training schedule that focuses on your goals. Usually these are developed by coaches and sports institutions with much experience in the field. This will help you make the most of your training. It will yield much better results than putting ceramic bearings in your bike. Make sure you have a comfortable saddle. An uncomfortable saddle disrupts your rhythm and your pedaling style. The bicycle saddle is unique to each individual person and finding your right saddle may take a bit of time. Many professional cyclists will take their preferred saddles off of their bike when they get a new bike or they swap teams. So find your ideal saddle. It will make you a more efficient rider. Paraffin waxing your chain instead of using traditional lubricants will save between 3 to 5 watts just as much or more than using ceramic bearings in your bottom bracket, hubs and jockey wheels all put together. Some say that by not shaving it makes you feel more aggressive, thus giving you a psychological advantage. But then shaving your legs for cycling can be a psychological advantage as well. So to shave or not to shave, even if it is the placebo effect, if it works, it works. There are certainly many other ways to save your power, but the more you apply, the faster you'll become. After all that, if you still want to try out ceramic bearings, one place with low load but high spin rate is your jockey wheels. Good place to start because you can buy quite cheap versions of them. Here's one here. This was a Chinese one, and that's okay because remember, they're not taking much load. This is quite nice and free. There's one drop of lubricant in each bearing. So we'll try these out and I'll let you know in a future video how we go with these Chinese jockey wheels.